The first primitive bridges consisting of logs placed across a body of water appeared in ancient times. With the development of technology, humanity has learned to construct truly remarkable structures. A striking example is the Danyangkunshin Grand Bridge, listed in the Guinness World Records as the longest bridge in the world. Nevertheless, there are places where a bridge is needed but has not yet been built, including the Strait of Gibraltar. The Strait of Gibraltar can be called a crossroads of significant global importance, connecting the Mediterranean Sea with the Atlantic Ocean. It serves as a vital trade route for Mediterranean countries to connect with the rest of the world. Approximately 200 large vessels traverse this route daily. Its significance grew even further after the official opening of the Suez Canal for navigation in 1869. This 160-kilometer canal divided Eurasia and Africa, eliminating the need for ships to circumnavigate Africa to travel between the Indian Ocean and the Mediterranean Sea, effectively shortening the route by nearly 8,000 kilometers. Strangely enough, when it comes to the Strait of Gibraltar, the story is different. Its opposite shores have long desired a land connection. Intensive ferry traffic operates between Morocco and the Iberian Peninsula, indicating a clear need for a crossing over the strait. Its construction is beneficial from various perspectives, including tourism and economics. From the point of view of trade development, it would serve as a valuable asset. The fact is that North Africa, which includes Algeria, Morocco, Egypt, and other countries, is an important partner of Europe, with billions of euros in trade volume between them. A new bridge would open up significant opportunities for increased trade between these nations. To connect Europe and Africa, it is sufficient to build a 15-kilometer-long bridge, as the minimum width of the strait is just over 14 kilometers. By modern standards, this isn't all that much. Can Europe not afford such expenditures? Or do Europeans not have the necessary technologies? In reality, it's much more complicated. Bridge projects and other possible ways to connect the two shores have been under development since the early 20th century. Some of these proposals could be described as nothing short of ambitious. In the late 1920s, German architect Hermann Sorgel proposed an ambitious project known as Atlantropa. Its goal was to connect Europe and Africa by partially draining the Mediterranean Sea, as well as generating a huge amount of electricity. As part of Atlantropa, Sorgel intended to build several dams, with the main one blocking the Strait of Gibraltar. As a result, the Mediterranean would have separated from the Atlantic Ocean and its water level would have dropped by 100 meters. According to Sorgel's calculations, only the Gibraltar hydroelectric plant could produce approximately 50 gigawatts of electricity. This would have represented more than 50% of the total capacity of the entire U.S., the world's largest nuclear energy producer today. However, this approach could not only supply nearby regions with electricity, but also provide desalinated water to the Sahara to create extensive agricultural lands. According to Soldier's plan, connected by power lines coming from the Gibraltar hydroelectric station and connected by roads and railways, Europe and Africa would become a new part of the world. When the National Socialists came to power in Germany, Sorgel tried to draw their attention to the project, but Hitler showed no interest. Furthermore, the architect was prohibited from promoting Atlantropa. He only returned to actively publicizing his ideas after World War II. The project appealed to many major industrialists because they hoped to profit from it. However, the funds for its implementation were never found. Besides, the project was still utopian, and its disclosure caused outrage among the inhabitants of Southern Europe. In 1952, Sorgel passed away, and with him, the fantastic Atlantropa disappeared. There were more down-to-earth ideas for uniting the two parts of the world, including various bridge and underground tunnel projects. But before we look at the most interesting of them, let's understand the challenges in their realization and why there have only been timid attempts to start doing something not only on paper. The problem is mainly of a natural and geographical nature. Among these challenges is the depth of the Strait of Gibraltar, which reaches over a thousand meters in some places. For comparison, the world's tallest building, the Burj Khalifa in Dubai, stands at a height of 828 meters. Now imagine that you will have to build supports that will be much taller than it. At the same time, the world record for the height of bridge supports belongs to the Viaduct Mino at only 245 meters. The deepest underwater supports are found in the Padma Bridge in Bangladesh, reaching 122 meters. Supports nearly a kilometer high have simply never been attempted. Another significant obstacle is the strong current. Its power is four times greater than the power of all rivers on our planet. Furthermore, the currents in the Strait of Gibraltar flow in opposite directions. The lower part moves westward while the upper part moves eastward. 
Given such depth and the characteristics of the current, both the construction process and the maintenance of a traditional bridge with supports are complicated. At the same time, we must not forget about possible natural disasters. Cost of implementing such a project amounts to billions of dollars. Many European scientists claim that building the bridge is impossible, both technically and financially. Nevertheless, as far back as the 1990s, the idea of a bridge across Gibraltar was proposed by Tung Yin Lin, an American engineer of Chinese descent. He wanted to connect Europe and Africa via two capes, Oliver Rose and Sires. Among the distinctive features of his bridge were deep piers and unprecedented spans of 5,000 meters. Lin engaged the services of an engineering company from San Francisco as consultants, whose specialists created computer models, conducted research on structural configurations and stiffness systems, as well as aerodynamic characteristics. Extensive and serious work was carried out. The construction was estimated at $15 billion at the time, but as you may have already guessed, the project remained on paper. In 2004, American architect Eugene Tsui proposed a very unusual version of the bridge. Tsui designed a floating bridge with a segmented structure resembling a spine. Part of the structure was planned to be submerged underwater to avoid problems with navigation. In the middle, the architect intended to create an artificial island nearly five kilometers wide. They were going to install wind and hydro turbines on it, capable of providing energy to a large part of Morocco and southern Spain. If this amazing bridge were ever built, it would undoubtedly become one of the main attractions of the region. But if the bridge doesn't work out, what about other options? The idea of building a tunnel under the Strait of Gibraltar has long exciting the minds. For example, the Channel Tunnel is 51 kilometers long, which is more than three times longer than the Gibraltar Strait. The idea first appeared as a formal plan over a century and a half ago. Then financial problems and difficulties in implementation prevented its realization. In the 1930s, Spain revisited the tunnel project, but once again, nothing came of it. Engineers hired by the Spanish government found that there were very challenging rock formations under the strait. The technologies available at that time simply did not allow for drilling it. Despite previous failures, Spain was not in a hurry to completely abandon the tunnel construction. In 1979, a committee was formed jointly with Morocco to implement the project. They worked on it for about 40 years. The result was unfortunate and the project was canceled. Here are the difficulties that the designers faced. In the middle of the strait, the Eurasian and African lithospheric plates meet, causing seismic hazards. And let's not forget about the depth of the Gibraltar Strait. For example, the channel tunnel descends underground to a maximum of 75 meters, while a similar tunnel under Gibraltar would have to go deeper than a kilometer, which no one has done yet. In early 2023, the press once again began to write about the possibility of an underwater tunnel connecting Europe and Africa. This time, the United Kingdom has become seriously interested in the project's implementation. The reason is that the country needs to look for new trade connections after leaving the European Union and the associated losses. Building a tunnel leading from Gibraltar to Tangier, Morocco's largest port, seems like a very logical step. However, it is not very clear how border controls will be managed and whose responsibility the financing will be. In any case, there is currently no precise information regarding the project. According to forecasts, in the next decade, Africa is expected to be among the fastest developing regions in the world. In such a future scenario, a bridge or tunnel connecting the two continents becomes especially important. There is a possibility that sooner or later, such a crossing will indeed materialize. However, at present, it remains challenging to implement both from a technical and financial perspective. Write in the comments what you think about the possibility of realization of this incredible mega project. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. See you later.